I should have grabbed a little piece. There we go. This one, I don't know if I left it out or if you put it there this morning. I put it there this okay. morning. I had two. When did you do? Oh, uh, okay. Right in front of you. Okay, guys, so this is the Benjamin Obdike Slicker Classic. As you can see, it's just a mesh that staples up against the wall. What that does is it holds the shingle off the wall or the siding. Here's how it works. Basically, it allows for channel for air or water to escape. So I'm gonna waste some good beer here. That's how it works. And it was actually water. Cool. Kill. Okay, this is part two of the Lakeshore Project siding. In the last video, we went over lap siding, layout, all that good stuff. In this video, we're gonna focus on the front of the house where we will install some cedar shingles pre-primed and some LP siding installed as board on board. So this is a vertical application of their smart side, but it's the 12 inch and it will go on vertically. So what's with the yellow stuff? I'm glad you asked. That's the Benjamin Obdike Slicker Classic. It's been around for a long time. What it basically does is, you, I'm just stapling it on the wall. And by the way, I find that scissors work way better than a knife. I always reach for my knife and then I realize my knife blade is always dull, but the scissors work really well. And it's easy to cut straight because there's a discernible pattern to it. Anyway, this stands your siding off of the wall about a quarter of an inch. So as you saw, any water that gets behind, bulk water, it's just gonna drain out the assembly. Really what we want is we want to increase the drying potential of the siding or the, the gap between the siding and the zip panels there. So in the IRC, R702.7.1 vapor retarders, in our marine climate, we actually need to have vented cladding over wood structural panels. Well, we can't just put a panel product up against the wall and have that be vented. It just doesn't work. You know, it's basically sheeting to sheeting. Where we have lap siding, we have air channels behind all of that, and especially with the corner boards over the top. All of that allows for drying potential, and that's what we want. Can't do that in this case, and of course everybody knows that for cedar shingles, having uh, venting behind your, your uh, the back side of your cedar shingles will increase the longevity of your paint and the siding itself. So, that is a really long explanation of why we're putting this on because we're gonna put cedar and because we're gonna put 12 inch pieces of uh, lap siding installed vertically, nailed flat to the wall, we're using this product because as you saw, any water that gets back there's gonna drain and any vapor that comes from inside the house has a way out. So let's get into the nuts and bolts. These rolls are very lightweight. If you've installed house wrap or tar paper, this is even easier because it's super light. In some respects, it's a little annoying at first because you have to snip or cut with scissors around windows. It's really not that big of a deal as you can see. This literally was the first time I've ever installed it. And I consider myself an expert now because it's that simple. Basically, if there's any cutting you need to do, I would recommend doing it for the most part on the ground or on a table. So here I cut from the window to the corner and then I just scissor right across that. I mean, yes, I sped it up. This is at 400% speed, so it's about four times faster. Still super easy. Just a regular hammer tacker. Don't pound the daylights out of this stuff with your hammer tacker, because it will crush the fibers. But what we found as we installed is we didn't have any dimpling. It was plenty strong enough that as you gun nailed through siding, it didn't dimple. That was a little bit my concern. We chose to install it right up to the windows. The windows are already correctly flashed. You can see that in previous videos, it's all taped to the wall. It's an airtight detail. Once we get done detailing the inside, we blow our door test, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about that. If you do, you're, you're way cooler than me. <laughs> anyway, we go right up to the windows because then all of the trim also stands proud. It also means we don't have to account for that quarter of an inch when we pack out the LP trim. So it's one less detail to worry about. There's no need to like layer this stuff and flash. You notice that even between the layers, I have a little bit of a gap. 
that's okay. Its only purpose is to stand the siding off the wall. So it doesn't have to be installed meticulously like some house wraps do and all that stuff. We just need it to be there for that gap. So in some respects, even though it's not a cheap product, it's really easy to work with and you don't have to be super, super detailed. And this is how we always start board on board siding with LP Smart Side. We always center a piece on the window and we work out from there. Now, I don't remember off the top of my head what the reveal was that we went with. I think the gap between those column candy stripes, basically the gap between each piece, let's just call it six inches. I think it was six, might've even been eight. Um, two inch overlap on each side from 12. So I think it was eight. What I did is I cut a little piece that's like one inch rip, eight, perfectly eight inches. And I used that as a gauge. That way I didn't have to pull out my tape quite as much. So the first piece goes centered, and then the distance between each piece is eight inches. Then I center an eight inch gap, put the pieces on, and then each of those has an eight inch gap. So you can see it's really, really simple. Um, I did make one mistake and edit it out. When you put the first piece on the wall around the window, right there, I also need a small rip the length of the window trim right next to the window. Otherwise I have nothing to nail to. <laughs> so I didn't make you guys sit through me pulling nails. That was just pure stupidity on my part. What we really like with this stuff is to, when we're putting on any like chair rail trim or belly bands like there at the bottom, is instead of making everything perfectly level, we try to get the belly band right on. After that, measure everything parallel. And that way you can gain cut all of your pieces. So don't forget, according to LP's instructions, we need to hold all of that siding 3 eighths of an inch off of our metal on that belly band. So I always use just a ripper piece, like maybe three feet long by one inch, and it just sits there and then I can push down on that with my panel and that guarantees a 3 eighths gap. So let's just say by going parallel with all of our trim, let's just say my measurement from the window to that gap is, is three foot. Since LP requires us to be one quarter inch short to allow for expansion, I'm gonna cut all my pieces 35 and three quarters. So I can essentially go over and make a cut list and have everything staged about where I need it. Then I can take all my measurements and then go over to the table and cut it. Some of you have really good vision and you're going to notice that I'm short of the soffit with all of these panels. Remember, LP wants us to be a quarter inch short to allow for expansion. That makes life for you and me really easy because we have some slot built in. So we can cut everything deliberately short. What we ended up doing was trimming that with a one by two nailed right over the bats and we used a 16 penny nail to gap that off of the soffit. That even gap looks way better than a caulk joint. It's zero maintenance, but even better it allows for full venting on that Benjamin Obdike. In other words, it's not sealed at the top. So it's just a little trick that it looks good, it's super easy to do, and it actually serves a purpose. So that's like win, win, win. Win. Now that I'm on my first piece to the right of the window, I go ahead and plumb it. I know my gap and layout is correct at the bottom, but I just plumb it so I don't have to get on a ladder and measure the top. So nailed it all off. The first piece that I cut around the window, that one, I'm, I'm gonna make sure it's just right. Sometimes I got off and I have to cheat the reveal above and below the window. So you're gonna get on a ladder to measure it anyway. That's the piece that really matters, not the one that is essentially on the wall first because it all gets covered on each side by the next one over the top. So board goes on first <laughs> and then board goes on second. And it's that second layer is where you have to be just a little bit more careful, like any other siding, right? There's a rip in the corner because my overlap or my outside board comes into the corner. That means I need a nailer. So you just rip a scrap or use up whatever you have. It's just backing to keep that thing from like pushing in on the right. We want it to be nice and flat.
So yes, one downside is that it's all face nailed. But all of our trim is face nailed, all of the belly bands are face nailed, all of our face is face nailed. So we don't worry about that, but we do caulk the nail heads. So this is the smooth LP Smart Side, and it is not forgiving when you finish it. So we use Big Stretch because it's very easy to touch up those nail heads without getting a shine after the wall's painted. In the wintertime, we prefer Quad Max, like that's what we showed in the last video, but it does not work well looks wise, aesthetically, on the outside of the siding. It's great, like trim to window, siding to, to window or trim, but not so good for touching up those face nails. So big stretch. The negative that we found with big stretch is that we need at least three solid days because if it rains, it will just wash it right off the wall. So it needs a little bit of time to set up. That was not an issue on this house because we had plenty warm temperatures and we weren't getting painted for like a month after this. Happy Friday, everybody. We are about to enter the heat dome. 90 today, 95 tomorrow, 104 Sunday and Monday. So stay safe. I uh, It's 7 o'clock and it's already over 70. And that's for us is hot. Normally our high would be 73 as an average. That's our low. <laughs> so anyway, like my new uh, blue T.5 work hoodie from True Work. Love these shirts. Oh, also temple tape. You cannot not wear temple tape. Keep that sweat out of your safety glasses. So stay safe, everybody. Drink lots of water. I have a feeling Kyle and I will be going home around lunchtime because we can. It's like a sauna in here. So you don't want to know one of the actual tricks to working in the heat is sit in the sauna for 10 minutes every or, well, Same thing. Sit in the honey bucket for 10 minutes every hour. And when you come out, you'll instantly feel a breath of fresh air. I think that joke works on multiple levels if you think about it. All right, I overdid it. Worked through lunch. Thought I was keeping up with water, but just had to frame a wall for the insulator so that he could keep spray foaming, which meant I had to be in a wear, had to be wearing a respirator. <sighs> My weekend is starting now. I love all of you. Stay safe. And, and no joke, temple tape, man, I couldn't live without this. Keeps moisture from getting in my safety glasses. I know I said, ow, just hooked my nose on my Fitbit. Yeah. I can tell, I'm getting cranky. I'm getting cranky, Timmy's getting cranky. Oh, George getting crazy. Okay, before you ask, I do not know the paint color. That's just primer. And it seems like each batch that we get has a little different color. This one's kind of more of a bluish gray. Oftentimes it's just a, a grayish gray, <laughs> if you will. Anyway, so I don't know what color it is. I like to install shingles to a snap line that I tack a one by two right to that line with a finish nailer. And when I nail it on, I only put a few nails and I aim for the keyways or the gaps between the shingles. And that way when I pull that board off, nobody's gonna see that little pinhole. Then I just work left to right or right to left, however, doesn't matter. I don't think I have a preference. I use the gun ambidextrously. You'll notice that we do not install corner boards first and we are not weaving the corners. So first, why corner boards over the top? Because it's easy. 
I don't have to be super precise when I cut those shingles at the end. A lot of times I can score and break them with my knife. Second, we're not gonna weave the corners because it's labor intensive, it's expensive, and frankly, I don't think it's gonna be as durable as hiding those corners with corner boards. So that's just us. Remember, we have the home slicker, so we have plenty of drying. We don't need to worry about any kind of weather. It, that's it. Now, as I go up next to the windows, I always caulk the row and then I set that shingle into the caulking. And we call that blind caulking. That way you don't see it, but it still has the protection. To be honest, we don't need any caulking because we have the home slicker. So next time I do this, we won't be caulking at the windows. There's just no advantage to it at that point, right? Might as well give it that old school look. I ran the slicker a couple of feet on the right, and that's because we were gonna bring the shingles around. The same as that wall you just saw, whatever depth that was, we do the same thing here, then we have a piece of trim, and then the lap siding that you saw in the last video. So instead of using a board, I just use the level to draw a line, and that's what I align those shingles to. Just a little easier when I'm working off a ladder. No sense in putting a board on every course and ripping it off, in my mind. So remember from the last video, the gable scribe? Here's how we scribe our angles. Is we first, we pin a little piece of siding uh, at like a 90 degree. Then I just spread these out and I use the gable scribe to scribe the angle. I am not concerned about being perfect because we're gonna do that shadow fascia detail again. can do that all day long. So this is how I like to cut shingles now is I just roughly line those angles up and I make one cut through with the saw. It's not perfect, but it works well for me. Okay, so this house is about done on the inside. That giant rock in the front, it took a forklift and the Kubota to pull it out way back when we cleared the land. But there is the house finished. We're just waiting for some water to drain so we can get the hardscape and the landscaping done. There's the board and board on board and the shingles. So it's just a breakup in patterns and you can see the color of the house. It's gonna end up getting shutters. We just haven't gotten around to it. We save that kind of thing for inside rainy day work. No big hurry right now because the house won't be going on the market quite yet. I think the septic is finally uh, inspected and that can be backfilled. And then of course, just final grade landscaping and driveway. So there it is, the house all sided. Not a huge house, three sides LP, LP board on board, and then cedar shingles. In the future, you're probably going to see us use the LP shingle because they have a perfection version and they have a rustic version and it's the same panel, you just flip it over. I am really keen to try that out and that way all of our siding is the same company, which makes dealing with warranties much easier. I just like that board on board look. Um, one other thing, you probably noticed it earlier, remember we use up all of our rips from the roof and we pad out those belly bands. Then we get some custom metal bent. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please hit that like and subscribe if you want. Maybe just watch it like 900 times, and if every one of you does that, that will be lots of views. All right, take it easy.
Okay, pay attention, we're only saying this one time. Why did Shane leave Awesome Framers? We're sick of his attitude. Scumbag. He's a scumbag. He's just kind of a jerk. Hey guys, I, Total... got you, uh, I got you some presents. Oh. I just want to go to the job site to give you guys some presents. Oh, man, we miss well, you, Shane. This is a shield egg and an uh, Oregon Spirit bourbon. Here you go. So, uh, hey, Shane. All yours. No hard feelings, I Shane. We take, we take back. Right? Yeah, so, thanks. We, we, we take it back. We didn't say anything about you. No. Nope. What did you say? Oh, we were just trying to tell people how much we're going to miss you because. Yeah. Oh. You're uh, probably one of the funniest guys that we've ever known. Oh, that's nice. That's, that's good. good. You wanna, you. You wanna tell everybody why you're moving on? Or where you're moving on to? It's none of your business and it doesn't matter. Exactly. exactly. Ah, I'm gonna miss you. Yeah.